सहमत है이렇게 저희 화면이 나오거든요. 여기 네. 어, 네, 이제 사실 목소리 다 나오고. 굿 애프터눈 에브리원. 마이 네임 이즈 용정. 아이마 뉴클리메이션 테크놀로지스트. 서울 내셔널 유니버시티 하스피스. I would like to share with you about quality control on nuclear medicine instrument, especially gamma camera and SPECT system. Today we'll be covering photopic, field uniformity, spatial linearity, sensitivity, center of rotation, SPECT uniformity, and uniformity correction. Let me first introduce our imaging equipment we currently use in our department. Various machines have been developed by different manufacturers for the special purpose in nuclear medicine imaging. The top left two images are gamma camera, and the image on the right is the spec CT. And the bottom left picture is a triple head gamma camera for the brain spec. And next in the middle, cardiac spec machine that uses a CGT-based solid state detector. <laughs> Lastly, thyroid scanner using the penal collimator. And let's move on to the today's subject. The quality control testing on the instrument should be performed thoroughly to ensure patient safety and diagnostic accuracy. Through the QC procedure, we can identify the equipment problems before they affect clinical patient study. And it, in, and it is important to verify that all camera calibration is up to date. This table shows the list of major QC tests and optimal testing frequency. Let's look at the table. Field uniformity is done daily, and special resolution and linearity are tested weekly. And center of rotation and uniformity correction are done monthly. However, testing frequency can vary depending on the manufacturer's recommendation or institution policy. Because of the improvement of technology in clinical imaging equipment, test frequency can be reduced. I will be talking about each test on the next slide. Before test starting any QC test or clinical imaging procedure, we have to confirm that isotope energy level we are going to use is centered for a proper photopic. We can easily adjust the photopic and energy window level on the acquisition setting page. We generally set C metric 20% energy window and photopic of isotope, which is used for the study. For example, when we are going to use a technician, energy level is centered on 140 kV, and accepted energy ranges from 126 to 154 kV. High voltage fluctuation can move a few kV of the peak, so we should not forget checking the photo peak before we start any acquisition. This image show the error occurred when we use the room energy setting. The image on the left is obtained when we acquire the cobalt source with the technician energy setting. P 
PM tubes are visualized, which is undesirable. And the error in the right image happens if we use a too narrow energy window. The shape of a PM tube is also visualized, and there are some decreased intensity on the upper and the margin on both sides. Once the energy picking is verified, we proceed to the uniformity test. Field uniformity is the ability of a scintillation camera to produce a uniform image with the radioactive source that provides a uniform dis distribution of photon. The test can be done either intrinsic or extrinsic. This table is the comparison between intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic test is done without collimator to check the condition of the sodium iodide crystal and electronic part, such as PM2. On the other hand, extrinsic is done with a collimator in place to assess the equipment as it is used clinically. <coughs> We can choose one method, either of them, or perform intrinsic test weekly while doing extrinsic daily. Once a specific method is adopted, the same method should be used consistently for the day-to-day -day comparison. We will look at each method closely from the next slide. Let's see the extrinsic first. These two phantoms are the flood sheet source. We can choose for the extrinsic uniform test. The image on the left is the cobalt sheet source, and the right image is the refillable phantom to be filled by technician solution. Cobalt shields sheet source is uh, provided by the manufacturer commercially. Considering it's a somewhat long half-life of 270 days, we don't have to prepare the flood source every single day. Moreover, 122 kb of quad 57 energy is similar to that of technician, which is most uh, frequently used isotope in nuclear medicine imaging. On the other hand, the phantom filled with technician need to be prepared every morning due to the fact that half-life of technician is only six hours. So cobalt sheet source is more conveniently used for the daily uniformity test than technician phantom. When the flood sheet source is ready, we do the extension uniformity test in the morning before starting clinical patient imaging. Prior to acquiring the flood source image, we need to check the background in the room with the same detector first. If it's confirmed that there is no other radioactive source in the room, we can proceed to the next step. The flood sheet source is placed right on the collimator while the same distance from the boost detector as it described in the image on the right. Approximately 10 million counts needed to be acquired, and it takes around 10 minutes with a 10 millicurie of flood source. And this slide sh shows the intrinsic uniformity test. We need to prepare the technician point source for the intrinsic. One milliliter syringe and 500 microcurie of technician solution I use them. To make the point source, we draw 0.1 milliliter of technician into the syringe and change the needle to avoid the fracture source. Shape of the source should be exactly one tiny spot, and technician activity should not be more than 100, 500 microtree. So the count rate does not exceed 20 kilo CPS 
to prevent that type. Collimators are removed from the camera head. Then the point source is placed on the bottom or the ceiling at least five UF of a diameter distance away from the host detector. Keeping adequate distance between the source and the crystal surface will make the variation of photon flux below 1%. After acquisition is done, computer analyze and generate a report like this. And there are four terms we need to know when you review the uniformity value. Uniformity is calculated in two different area scope. First, 95% of the field of view is called UFO. And CFOV means the area of 75% of the FOV. Then integral and differential uniformity are measured in both UFOV and CFOV. Integral uniformity evaluates the entire flood area of UFOV, UFOV and CFOV and find the max and minimal pixel count. Then each values are applied to the above formula. And differential uniformity test, the five contiguous pixel segment, which has the largest difference between two pixel counts, either in a row or a column. And value is calculated in the same way. And there are allow allowable limits for non-uniformity that, that are is established by the manufacturer. Non-uniformity in F UFOB should be below 5.5 and 5 in CFOB. The intrinsic uniformity limits are lower than that of ex extrinsic, such as 3.5 for UFOB and 3 for CFOB. The limit can be different slightly, depending on the camera vendor. And we also carefully review the flood imaging to check if there is any non-uniformity or artifact. When you look at the acquired image and value in this report, we notice that the, fl the flood uniformity is satisfactory within the limit. We complete the Field uniformity test daily. And this table showed the examples of non uniformity. Let's have a look one by one. Incorrected or misadjusted photo peak cause hot or cold tubes, as it described in the image on the left. The PM tube shape is visualized. In this case, selecting correct key can take care of this problem. And broken crystal should cold the spider web defect or cold the spot with hot as shown in the second image. In this case, crystal must be replaced. And collimator defect indicate cold spot with hot edge, like in the uh, third image. In this case, also collimator needed to be replaced. And mistuned photomultiplier tube indicates circular cool area, uh, as shown in the right image. This case can be taken care of by performing auto-tune camera. <laughs> and PMT, PMT, PM tube failure show circular code with hot spot. As shown in the image on the left, there is just one cold spot in the field of view. In this case, the PM tube must be replaced. 
And radioactive contamination also causes some artifacts. Uh, one to hot focal light diffusion activity can be seen in the field of view, as shown in the middle image. And uh, contamination can be removed by using some specific chemical solution. And lastly, hydroscopic damage to crystal can show dark measures like this in the image on the right. In this case, the detector crystal must be replaced. The next test is the special resolution. Special resolution is the ability of a scintillation camera to separate a small object in space. So good special resolution enables us to see small defects in the clinical patient study. Four quadrant bar phantom is used for the special resolution test with the flood sheet source. Four different widths of lead bars are embedded in each quadrant and lead bars are thick enough to stop radiation. Lead bar width is 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 millimeter respectively. The extrinsic resolution test is described in the left image. Four quadrant bar phantom is placed right on the collimator mounted to the detector, and cobalt sheet source covers on top of it. Resolution test also can be done intrinsic without collimator using technician point source <coughs> placed on the ceiling away from the detector, as it is described in the right image. In order to inspect over the entire detector with all kinds of different widths, four quadrant bar phantom rotates 90 degrees to another. So other different images are obtained for each detector. This is the result image. Visible smallest bar and space widths should be matched to the allowable limit specified by the manufacturer. The smallest, smallest width bar is normally not distinguishable clearly, even though camera functions well. We should be able to discriminate at least two largest width bar. In that sense, these images show satisfactory special resolution. And the next procedure is a special linearity test. Special linearity test refer to how well the camera produces a uniform image with a straight line. It is an important factor to describe true urban shape. These images are obtained with a parallel, parallel line equal space phantom. All lead bars and spaces have the same width. Deviation from straight line should be less than one millimeter. And linear, linearity test can be done along with this resolution test using four quadrant bar phantom. We check the straightness of parallel bar and review the image to see if, if there is any uh, wavy or curved appearance. Sensitivity is the capacity to detect ionizing event in sodium iodide crystal. And it is expressed as a detecting count per minute per microcurrent. It can be done along with the uniformity test as long as we know the source activity and the background. The source activity is measured and corrected for decay and acquired counts are calculated for unit activity. Then the calculated sensitivity is compared with the previous value. Maintaining the same condition of the test 
is exceedingly important in this test, such as the source to detector distance and the shape of source and correct energy setting and collimation. Sensitivity can be a useful indicator of minor or slow degradation of the system. Testing frequency depends on the department protocol or the manufacturer's recommendation. And now we are going to look at the COR test and tomographic phantom study, which are the tests to monitor the SPECT system. When you perform the SPECT imaging, camera head rotate for three dimensional acquisition. If the rotation is perfect, the reconstruction matrix will always place a given pixel in the same location. To check and correct for slight variation in the position of camera head when it rotates, COR evaluation needs to be performed. For COR test, we need 500 microcurie of technician point source and the supporting figure to hold the source as shown in the picture on the right. Manufacturers may offer proper devices for their machine. Required items and test method may really differ from camera brands. Once the point source is placed off center between detector, SPECT acquisition can start. Different COR tests should be performed for each collimator that are practically used for the clinical imaging. Since different weight and fit of the collimator may affect variation. In case the camera is used in 90 degree head position for cardiac study, COR test should be done in 90 degree detector separations as well, as well as in 180 degree position. When the acquisition is done, the computer calculates the correction factor for variation of the detector position. This is the COR test report that the computer generates. The alignment should be checked in both X and Y axis. Manufacturer provides software for alignment and calculation and correction for COR variation so that offset are easily corrected by the computer. Acceptable COR offset limit is plus minus one millimeter which correspond to uh, a 1.25 pixel. The error in these images are caused, caused by COR offset. The images on the, on the top are acquired with a technician point source in SPECT acquisition. The image on the left Left end has no COR offset error, which is the best. And the image of 0.25 pixel offset error is still fine. However, as the COR offset error increases, special resolution deteriorates significantly. And even the point source appears as a small ring with a large COR offset error, like in the image on the right end. And the images on the bottom are reconstructed slices of JJ phantom image. The image obtained with 0.25 pixel offset error shows slight degradation comparing to that with no offset error. On the contrary, significant de degradation is seen in the image with 0.5 pixel error. As we see from these examples, the COR offset error causes a loss of a reconstructed, reconstructed spatial resolution and contrast. In this case, the, COR, the correction for COR offset error must be done immediately. COR test is generally required to complete once a month. And let's move on to the SPECT, spec phantom study. 
we especially perform cylindrical tomography phantom test to check the best performance characteristics of SPECT imaging system, such as tomography uniformity, contrast, and resolution. For this test, we use JJ SPECT phantom, which is fillable with a solution containing radioactive solution. 15 to 20 millicurie of technician needs to be thoroughly mixed with water inside the pattern. For uniform uh, di distribution of activity. Then the phantom is placed between the detector centered on the field of view for spec acquisition. It is important that phantom should be positioned parallel to the skin table to get proper image variation. Then spec acquisition is performed in 180 degree dual head position or 360 degree total angle of rotation. It is needed to acquire phantom image with two or three times higher counts than usual clinical study. So total 25 to 30 million counts are acquired. And if we acquire the image with a low count, loss of special resolution can occur. The image on the left shows the degradation of the special resolution with 30 million counts acquired. On the other hand, the right image acquired with 30 million counts has quite good resolution. And let's look at what the phantom consists of. The phantom contains three different segments. There are non-radioactive rods of different size in the bottom of the phantom, which is for measuring special resolution. And there are cold spheres of different size in the middle that are used for measuring contrast. And then finally, in the top of the phantom, Hamajan's radioactivity segment for evaluating uniformity. The images on the right show the reconstructed transaction images for each segment. And this is the planar image of the rod segment in the bottom of the JJ phantom. We get this image prior to the spectra acquisition because this can be a reference image when evaluating tomographic special resolution. For the acquisition, place the phantom on right on the detector with a rod at the bottom, as it described on the right image. And this is the spec phantom image. Acquired data is reconstructed using filtered back projection algorithm with high resolution filter. Then we can get the, each part of slices from the reconstructed images for reading. Hamajan's radioactivity segment is visually inspected for uniformity and check if there is any artifact. And read the contrast segment in order to look for how many quarter spheres are actually visible. We should be able to see at least three large spheres if the camera is in normal condition. And then lastly, we'll look at the rod segments to see how many rod sections can be observed. The first or second small rod are normally not clearly seen, even under the good camera condition. So the result of this tomographic study satisfy the acceptable limit. And these are the examples of the bad case in the phantom study. The left image shows non-uniformity non since technician is not mixed well with water when preparing, preparing the phantom. And the right image indicate that camera system has uniformity problem and significant loss of resolution. In this case, Acquiring the, high, acquiring the high count correction map might be the solution 
which will be handled on the next slide. This image shows the bullseye wing artifact in the spectrum image due to the known uniformity. Known uniformity across the field of view must be, must be corrected for both planar and tomographic image quality. Especially in tomographic imaging, small variations in uniformity are multiplied by the number of projections and it causes art artifacts into reconstructed image as described in this image. To solve this method, the high count uniformity correction map should be acquired properly and frequently. Then the uniformity correction flaw is used as a map applied to the correction algorithm to every pixel in the image. Correction map must be acquired for the each collimators and metric size that are used for the clinical spec imaging. The acquired count is about 100 million, which is approximately 10 times more than that of daily uniformity test. Uniformity calibration can be done either extrinsic or intrinsic as we do the uniformity test but it takes more time to complete as it requires much higher count to be acquired. Cobalt sheet source also can be used for extrinsic uniformity correction, which provides a uniform di distribution of photon. However, technician is more ideal for uniformity calibration due to the fact that technician is the actual radioisotope we are using for the clinical imaging. The frequency of testing depends on manufacturer's recommendation and camera condition. We usually acquire the correction map monthly, as long as the condition of the camera is not that bad. These are the examples of problems which can be dealt with uniformity correction. Extrinsic uniformity correction may solve the matter posed by the defective collimator, as shown in the left image. And it, intrinsic correction can take care of a linearity problem as described in the image on the right. And lastly, I pick out this machine since it has different types of detector material and geometry array of detector element. This sort of machine requires different form of the source and the method for the quality control. The camera in the image is a dedicated cardiac imaging device. It uses a CGT-based solid state detector, cadmium zinc telluride, which is the semiconductor described in the right image. And this image shows the layout of the CG columns in the camera head. They seem totally different from the other spectra system. For the daily QC test, cobalt rod source is fixed onto the holder that is attached to the machine. And it is positioned vertically to cover the entire access area of the detector. Results are auto automatically generated once the acquisition is complete. The report shows the homogeneity index, effective FOV, and sensitivity. The QC process is becoming simplified and automated in the modern clinical imaging system, which is convenient for the end user. JSEC spec phantom study is also required to be done on this machine. And principle of the image analysis is the same as the other conventional spec camera. This concludes my pre presentation today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present to you today.
it is uh, these cardiac these specters have CT, right? No, it's just it doesn't have a CT variety. Okay. So, uh, 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 like, uh, does it have any kind of attenuation correction algorithm? Yeah, yeah. And in, in in most of the spectral imaging, the the AC should be applied to get the proper imaging quality. So, like, how do you do that? Uh, actually, I don't have much knowledge about that. Uh, maybe the some software, software. Uh, so, so software. is provided by the manufacturer. Do you have any other question? Uh, did, did, did you like upload the, the, your presentation to to some? Can can we get these presentations later? Okay. Yes, yes, of course. Did you send? Cover it's all right? Okay. Okay. But I already gave uh, my my material to, someone, to, 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 to Ms. Ms. Lee. Send me. Okay. Well, you can ask her. her yes, to because I think it's a quite important one. Like the QC things right. and the images you showed. Like those can serve as very good uh, reference images, like how the Q, like how the QC images should be. Like it's, it's really good. Thank you so much. If you need uh, additional yeah. material yes. for, about the, regarding the QC procedure, yes. I can uh, send you.